Hi. You probably at least once needed to render something from your map and use as an icon. Maybe a weapon or building, for instance. And you probably had to go through the pain of using Fortnite porting up, find that asset in there, export into Blender, set up lighting and material, and render it. Or maybe render in UFN and then use image editing app to cut out that asset from the rest of the image. Both options aren't painless. And in this video, I will show you a very easy and fast way to render high quality icons with transparent backgrounds directly in UFN. Before starting tutorial, I would like to mention that if you're interested in source files from my videos, you can find them on my Patreon. Link in the description of the video. Feel free as well to support us by following Yellow's Games on Fortnite.com. And now, let's begin. So, how we can render stuff uh, directly in UEFN? There are two ways. One, for example, is just a shortcut. Is uh, F11, I think, is the default one. But if you're not sure, you can go in Edit, then Editor Preferences. And in here, you can go into Shortcuts, or you can go just All Settings, and search for Screen. And as you can see, like, Screen Capture, it's... Oh, actually F9, not 11. And uh, then there is another one, as you can see, high resolution screenshot. And it by default not assigned. So that's why you can't enable it. And I assign it just to my numlock keys number five. So you basically need to do this, assign to your key, and that's it. So how it works. Now, if I'm pressing this five on a numpad, so I'm getting this window. In here, it's super simple everything as you can see so screenshot size multiplier what this means it basically renders everything what's in your viewport and uh, this multiplier it's when it sets one it means your resolution of your screen if you set for example to two it basically doubles that right so it increases uh, pixel quantity in there basically make it more detailed but keep in mind this is intense on a GPU and don't go crazy with this or you, you don't want like many, like really large number in here. Otherwise your texture will be like, let's say like 16,000 pixels and uh, it will crush basically your GPU. Um, it all depends on how powerful your GPU is, but normally one, it's totally fine, especially for the icons. I will just uh, show you uh, in a moment. And, um, Let's grab, I will just grab item placer. Now in here, let's add item, anything will do, like this. Now let's just click capture. And as you can see here, it's already shown me half. And if I will grab it, that's it. Select, so it's rendered. So first of all, we see all background, not just only item, and we see, of course, these outlines. So let's close that. If you go to G, and of course, like this bounding box is gone. So it's now what we wanted. This is one thing. Another thing, if you want to get more pixels out of your screen, uh, again, it renders only viewport and not UI, but UI now takes lots of space. If you will click F11, it goes into full screen which helps, right? So it's one thing. Then if you will click on this and then in here, if you didn't have that enabled, that's totally fine. It's because I used lower scalability, like I had. So if I will click on this one and then go in viewport scalability, I had it on the medium. That's why I had that orange icon. So I disabled, so now it's back on the Epic. Of course, if you want to render icon, you probably want to render it as high quality as possible. So use Epic or Cinematic. Epic, it's pretty close to Cinematic, so you don't need to go to Cinematic. What means Cinematic? It basically disables all optimization. So for example, if something is rendered to a certain distance and then it's cooling, so like uh, it's disabled, not rendered on a, after that distance, maximum distance. For the render, maybe you want to show that. So then you just, Cinematic disables all this optimization. But keep, keep in mind, if you have too many stuff, this can crush your, again, like GPU, if it's too much. Epic is totally fine for our case in here. 
So if I will now position that, I will do again another screenshot. And I'm looking, it's already much better. So what we can do just to remove this background. And it's actually super simple. Let's go back to Windows mode. I will select this icon and not icon, this item. And in here, you see like it said like skeletal mesh. And in skeletal mesh, there is our item. In the many devices and especially props like walls, doors, you can access the mesh, right? So by selecting components, for example, or static mesh component, in this case, it's empty. But in our, in our case, in this one, uh, we have. Then if we will scroll down, you can find render custom depth pass. You can click on it and nothing happened. Okay. But then look here in this window. It says use custom def as mask. What it means, if I will now tick this, um, everything gone. What green means, it's actually where is the green, it will be transparent. Easy as that. Now look, if I will capture now, and let's open. And as you can see, everything is gone, and now we have just icon. Because we have the noise, it's not perfect. Now let's tweak it. But as you can see, it was pretty simple just to render item with uh, no background. And sometimes you want maybe some additional details. In one of my old video, I was explaining about passes. So buffer visualization is basically passes, how rendering actually working. So we're not rendering directly as you can see. It's a final result, but actually what we're rendering, you see like it's base color, then custom depth, final image. Yeah, it's final image. <laughs> then for example, we have like a specular, uh, roughness, opacity, right? Ambient occlusion, all that. And actually if something is not working, it's actually will show you just normal image, um, normal quality as, as there. But for example, you see like we have this. And now again, if I will render this, I will render it as this. Different ways. So for example, now I can render this as white and that would be my mask or something, right? If I would want to. So this is super useful. But then let's disable this. And as I say, like we can render high quality stuff. Right now it's default lighting, right? Maybe you want that. That's totally fine for you. But I will disable it by taking this disable all time of day man uh, managers. And as you can see, everything now super black in there. So what, uh, let's see, yeah, my weapon is there. So now again, let's disable that. I will go in here and into lights and I need rectangle light. For the rendering, always use rectangle light. It creates much better results. It's soft shadows. If you need shadows, you can even disable shadows. But you have much more control over, for example, like a point light and definitely don't use directional light. Directional light is only for the sun. So, for example, you can see like if I will move it back or I can just tweak intensity. It already looks pretty good, right? If you will move it too close or too intense, object with reflection, increased reflection, they will have these highlights really intense. So again, you can, in the light, you can tweak intensity like this, or just move it a little bit further away. So then we have size of it. It's matter as well. So look, uh, you can control it with this source width and height like that. This is mostly for, of course, if you have large object, you won't scale it up. But for the small as this weapon, it's not so important, but it's important again for the highlights. You can see highlights now. This highlights really sharp and this gets them softer. So you can get pretty nice results, high quality results like that. So we can maybe position a little bit up like that. Okay. Now let's go into world 
uh, these coordinates. So then I can copy this and add it on the back. So normally when we're rendering something, we want some highlights on the edges. Looks pretty nice. So you can see that we're missing a lot in here because of this darkness. And again, maybe you don't want shadows, you can just disable it like that. In this case, it's not a big difference. I will leave shadows. But then here you see like we're getting much more details just by placing this uh, light at the, uh, at the back. I want to put it more on the side, like so, and enable again local coordinates. Like this. So on the back light, usually it's not so strong as our main light. So again, we want just a little bit of that detail, but not go too crazy. As you can see, like, it's a big difference then. You can add even more lights, right? Uh, so, for example, same on the bottom. Uh, we can even try now. Like so. Let's make it less intense. And of course, you can add different colors. So it's up to you. Play with this. There are like multiple really good parameters. Same for example, you can control specular. This uh, the, this will be your highlight. So for example, if I will go in my main one and play with specular, see like it's how it reflects in this shiny uh, materials. By tweaking this, of course, it won't be already like photorealistic, uh, like PBR, but this is for your artist to decide how it looks. So, okay, so it looks like this. Let's go into G again mode and select custom this uh, depth. Now we can go into full screen mode like this. Capture. And as you can see now, all these details like uh, aliasing gone, and this looks pretty high quality, and it's really high resolution image as well. So you can use in anywhere you want. Um, let me check now. So this is almost 4K by 2K. Um, pixels so it's really huge um, for the for example in the game if you would want to use it maybe it would be just like needed like 512 by 512 uh, maybe you can use this in a thumbnail if you want so yeah th this is pretty much how it works and you don't need anything much um, so it's again like some stuff won't have this access um, some stuff gives you a lot so it's up for you to try. So for example, uh, where are our prefabs? It's pretty much, there you go, uh, and props and prefabs. Uh, maybe not so many. Let's go into props better. Yeah, here we go. So for example, we have mm, maybe a bad. Okay, let's just place it. We have our bed, then again, you need to select mesh, yeah, static mesh component, then scroll down, custom path, and now you have your bed, just like that. And again, if you now render that, we have high quality bed icon. So this is pretty short tutorial but i'm like i noticed that many people still don't know how to do this and i use this a lot and hopefully 
this will be super useful for you and you won't need to go like through the all that pain again to go into Blender and using Fortnite porting just to render these icons. So yeah, have fun with this and uh, good luck. Bye. I would like to say thank you to my all supporters. I appreciate your support. Thank you for your generosity. You can get project files on my Patreon or just buy me a coffee to support me. If you are interested in learning more about UFN materials, coding, widget UI and more, you can join our growing Discord community where we like to discuss UFN tips and tricks, showcase our work and help each other. You can find link in the description or in the channel header.